there are three types of machines. Uh, perhaps I'll get time to speak about two. The first machine is the machina simplex, the simple machine. Uh, it can be quite complicated, but a two-stroke motor, two-cycle motor, a four-cycle motor, a sewing machine, a computer, uh, a telephone, uh, anything you want, which is teleonomic, that is, has a purpose in it. Quite simple. Now, the thing about an ordinary machine is that to make it, you have to put in information. You have to group the molecules together. That is, it's dependent upon a source of intelligence outside it to make any machine. I don't know any exceptions, do you? I don't really. Now that's a simple machine. And to maintain that simple machine, you've got to keep on putting information into it. You've got to take your car to be serviced, you see. And you've got to put in information outside. You've got to change the filters and all those sorts of things. That's got to be done. That is a simple machine. It's so simple that it's dependent continually on outside information. Now, a man called von Neumann who was an American mathematician and physicist, he had a mad idea. I won't talk about this mad idea just for a bit, because mad ideas are sometimes good. He said, look, the trouble about an ordinary machine is this. Somebody has to stand there and put in information into it all the time. You've got to have a blueprint, and you've got to stand at the line and see that the machines are produced, and then see that they're maintained afterwards. And they don't leave any offspring machines. Do they? Well, he said, what we want to do is make a machine that sprouts little machines. <laughs> that is, he wanted, and he said so, did von Neumann, he said, we want to make a watch that sprouts little watches. <laughs> that is, the, the blueprint for making the watch is not outside the watch, but in the watch. That is, you don't write the information to make a watch on a piece of paper or blueprint. What you want to do is put the information to make the watch onto the metal of which the watch is made, so that it can build itself. You want to make a watch that sprouts watches. Now, he went into this, and being a mathematician, he worked it out. Now, he said that the complexity needed to make a watch the information that you've got to put in to make a watch is, should we say, a thousand. Just a thousand units. Anything you like. A thousand units. The complexity, the bits of information that you've got to put in to make it is so much. Now, I said, if I make that machine such that the blueprint is in the machine instead of outside it, it'll be so complicated, a watch that sprouts watches, that it won't need a thousand bits of information to make it, it'll be ten million. You think a watch which is capable of taking out little cogwheels out of the atmosphere or making them itself and putting them in to sprout little cogwheels and little machines out of it. Well, I mean, it is simply marvelous, isn't it? So he said, look, we'll make a machine that sprouts machines, the same types of machines, sticks to the same species. Well. You know, the Europeans wanted to certify him. Uh, you know what a certified piece and persons means, don't you? Do you know? Do you do that here? Uh, some doctors do here. They say they clear them to be mad, you see, and put them into an institute <laughs> or give them phenothiazine or something like that. Well, they hadn't got that in those days. This was 1926. So where did he go? To the place of all madmen. He came to the States, you see. And the States, <laughs> well, you see, uh, the States greeted him like their long-lost uncle because... Uh, he got ideas. Well, that's why Europe isn't getting on very well, you see, because they don't have the ideas that they used to. So he came here. Well, von Neumann said, the great difficulty about my machine is this, that it's so frightfully complicated that it goes wrong quicker than I can bow it, build it. You understand me? You know that the more complicated the machine is, the quicker it goes wrong. You do know that, don't you? Vive les choses simples, is what the French say. Long live simple things, because they don't go wrong. But if you have them so that they're very complicated, they'll go wrong. Well, 
von Neumann said, if you need a watch which needs, say, a thousand component parts, you can build it before it goes wrong. And my watch usually runs about two years, and then it goes wrong, you see, and you have to send it back to the makers, and he charges you three times the price what it costs for a new one, you see, and put it right for you. Okay? Now, he said, okay, well, do this then. Uh, we'll make a machine now that is so complicated that it will reproduce itself. But he said it will require 10 billion component parts to make it. And before I've got in a billion component parts, some of them have gone wrong. So what are we going to do? Well, the Americans thought of one idea if we can solve that problem. So they got him over here, and he started to work on a machine that reproduced itself. NASA is doing this now. They want to send up a machine into space that builds factories for them itself. This is real. Well now, okay. For no man said, if we're going to have a machine that reproduces itself, it will on principle be so complicated that it'll go wrong before I can build it. So he said, there's only one thing to do. I must put another horizon, another level of complexity into it. It's so complex that I can't build it before it goes wrong if it reproduces itself. But I must do one thing more, otherwise I'll never build it. He said, I'm are you listening? Are we jogging? <laughs> Have I got you? I'm watching for that distant look, you know, looking into the middle distance and that vacant look. No, look. Uh, he said, look, we'll have to, are you ready? Uh, he said, we'll have to build into it a mechanism for diagnosing what goes wrong. So he had to produce another 10 billion bits of information into his machine to put a self-diagnostic apparatus into it so that when a bit went wrong before he started finished building it, it put it right again. Oh, wait a minute, it diagnosed the trouble. Well, now you've got a thousand bits of information to make the machine and then two or three million to make the machine reproduce itself in complexity. And now we've got to have a self-diagnosis horizon on it to make it know what's gone wrong while you're building it. Well, you put that in, a huge amount of complexity to make it self-diagnostic. And then he found out, well, look, he said to the Americans, it's no use to make a machine that diagnoses it's wrong if he can't put it right. No use to know unless you can heal it, you see. So they said, well, okay, put in that one. And he said, we need a third level of complexity, so many billion bits of information, to not only know what's gone wrong, but how to put it right again. And so he built this huge triangle of complexity. Here's the point down below for the machine. And he goes out and out and out here in complexity. So he had the third level on top of it, the machine that not only diagnosed what went wrong, but that put wrong, put right what was gone wrong. And that's known as the von Neumann machine. And everybody in secret is working on that today. Now you think of this, ladies and gentlemen, the worthy intellectuals of Anaheim. <laughs> you got it? You are, you, are a von Neumann machine. You think of all the bits of machinery that I've talked about, your heart, your liver, your kidney, your brain. Do you know if anything goes wrong in your brain, your heart, the body makes a supreme diagnostic effort to know what's gone wrong. And if anything goes wrong with your DNA molecule, if it's not too grave, if the whole thing is not cluttered up with radiation damage and all the rest of it, your body is capable of repairing it, of diagnosing it, and then repairing it. Now, if a simple machine, which can't reproduce itself, can't arise by chance, who in the name of reason, reason, is going to say that a von Neumann machine, which sprouts little machines, diagnoses trouble and puts it right, is going to arise by chance. 
It's the sheerest form of degeneration of the thought processes that I know of, to say that. <laughs>